Yeah. We're in the thick of earnings season. We have about a third of the S&P 500 reporting the numbers. And AMD is a big mover. Tell us all about it, Jenny. AMD is very similar to a lot. the move I actually was looking at yesterday in Uber, where initially this morning we were higher, Nicole. So this morning's positive story fit the bill, and now we're seeing shares lower. So the earnings move today makes less sense to me because it did seem like objectively a really strong report out of AMD as they do look to tap into this AI frenzy and also exploit some of the supply issues we've heard from NVIDIA, which seemed like a really good thing for this company. The CEO did share plans to ramp up the production of their flagship M1300 AI chip in the fourth quarter, which though in short supply, they said are ready to compete with NVIDIA's advanced H100 chips. Now, we did also see they acknowledged the compelling consumer interest in these series chips and some deals with top tier cloud providers as well as large enterprises and numerous leading AI companies. During the third quarter, we did see their adjusted earnings come in ever so slightly ahead of expectations on sales that did also rise on a year or fall, excuse me, on a year over year basis, but beat expectations. They do expect their 2023 sales and their data center businesses, including these flagship M100-300 chips, to exceed three, six billion in 2022. We did also see the fact that they now have enough components for these chips for an aggressive launch in the fourth quarter, as well as ample supply for the rest of the fiscal year. Now, their older chips do th- say they said remain an excellent option for less complicated AI tasks. They highlighted how cloud players like Microsoft, Alphabet, and have spent on data centers in the second half of this year and will likely lead the spending shift towards AI chips and infrastructure right now in the back half of 2023. AMD does expect its third quarter data center and client segment revenues to grow by double digit percentages sequentially driven by this increased demand. So again, this story really fit the bill when shares were higher, but now we're seeing this weakness today. I think just the fact that shares had risen 80% year to day, we were just priced a little bit too much more perfection ahead of these results. Yeah, and you know, we're going to be talking about CBS later in the day. I have a panel on the uh, watch list. You're covering CBS as well on the earnings. Tell us about what you're focusing on there. CBS, a name that needed some love today because shares are down about 18% this year. We've seen this weakness that has weighed on not only CBS, but its closest peer being Walgreens Boots Alliance, of course. Their second quarter sales, though, did rise pretty substantially 10% year over year to around $89 billion, beating consensus estimates driven by growth across all of their segments. Their adjusted earnings came in around to $221 per share. This did also exceed forecasts. And the company's pharmacy and consumer wellness segment saw revenue rise 7.6%, as well as an increased prescription volumes and higher prices, which offset some declining revenues from fewer COVID vaccines and tests. Now, prescriptions filled increased 1% on a 30-day equivalent basis, driven by, they said, their overall increased utilization. And they also did see their health services segment report revenue that was up 7.6%. They did record $496 million in pre-tax charges related to the restructuring program. They started during the quarter to rein in some of their costs. Now, this does follow news we got on earlier this week when they did announce eliminating approximately 5,000 jobs, mainly these corporate positions to to cut costs and concentrate on their healthcare services. So it seems like controlling their costs and some of these more efficiency matters are paying off here. We are seeing a nice 4% move higher and this name needed it. It's down about 28% off its 52 week high. And like I said, down about 18% on the year. All right, thank you for that. Two big names to watch. Jenny Horn, Markets Correspondent, appreciate it.